Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I'm here with another video where I'm going to do some player comparisons for you. Um, and today, it's going to be comparing the, um, the cards in the 60-player set when multiplied out to 2.7, which would have been a 162-game season as compared with the Imagine season, which Stratomatic has put out, which um, purports to be what the players would have done and what the player cards would have looked like had the major leagues played a 162 game schedule and Strat made a set based on that. But before I get into that, I want to point out that my Stratomatic Elmwood League is looking for another manager. We had a guy just suddenly drop out. He went through the, the uh, off season, he made a lot of trades, and then he just disappeared. And so we are looking for a replacement for him for the Gwinnett team. And uh, this is the Gwinnett team right here. Um, as you can see on the sidebar, these are the players that they have. Um, just a real quick look there, you know. Um, it's it's going to be a challenge because it's a 20 team league and the, he doesn't he's lacking a lot of uh, star power and he's lacking a lot of uh, players that can uh, you know make this team a contender but it's a challenge for anybody that feels like they they are up to a challenge like that uh, so if you want to do that you can contact our league commissioner Mr. Tom Bunch and I will leave Mr. Bunch's contact information in the description of this video so that you can go down there and reference it and email him if you want if you are interested in uh, taking over this team now a little bit about the league it's a play-by-mail league you uh, make your cms and you either send uh tom the um he, he plays seven games every week or one week's worth of scheduled games every week and he puts the results up on Saturday morning like clockwork and you send him either the CM that you make yourself in your own version of the game and and uh, push it to the cloud or you send him uh, if you don't have the game you can send him written instructions for every week for how you want changes made and what you want your lineup to be, et cetera. You don't have to own the game to be in this league, which does make it a little bit unique to most leagues, most uh, stratomatic competitive uh, play-by-mail leagues, you have to own the game. And in this one, you it's, uh, it's unique in that you really don't. So anyway, that that's that. I just wanted to get that out of the way. But now let's start with our comparisons so now we're going to start with the majors and this is if you remember in my previous video where i went over some player cards this is the league where i i took the 60 game set and i multiplied all the stats by 2.7 and um and came up with the player cards that are in this set so let's look at this and compare it to some of the notable players. I want to compare some of the notable players. And I got, I'm got i getting some players into this that weren't in the previous video also, in case you were just interested in seeing some player cards, some different player cards. But these are player cards where you can note a difference as well. So let's start with Baltimore. And in Baltimore, you can see, let's, let's look at Chris Davis. Now, this is Chris Davis extrapolated out from 60 games he would have hit batted 140 times as you can see with a 115 batting average and uh is that right no home runs i don't know yeah i guess it i guess it might be so anyway you got a 115 batting average and 140 at bats now let's look at this card as you can see um this is what the card looks like. And note, you've got a ton of on base, a ton of walks over here on the left versus the left side. And versus righties, all you've got is a double one to two fly ball. That is it. And then a double at 12, a double at 212. That's it. That's all you've got on the right hand side. So that's Chris Davis 
if you took his 60 game stats and you strictly just multiplied it by 2.7. Here is the imagined Chris Davis. And that's that's the stadium, but anyway. So here is the imagined Chris Davis. Big difference. 138 at bats, a 159 batting average. Here they give him four home runs. And as you can see, and so that, you know, not only does it factor in the home runs over on this versus righty side, but he actually gets on base a little more versus righties here. And he gets on base a little less versus lefties here because, of course, the 60 game sample is a small sample. And this is going to apply to almost every guy we talk about here. The 60 game sample is a small sample. They could have either had a really good run or a really bad run or a mostly good run or a mostly bad run in the course of 60 games, which is only as we're seeing roughly one third of a season. So I believe this is more realistic. Chris Davis, if he had played, would have had four home, would have had some home runs. I mean, he would have had something and, and hit better than 115 probably. And here it's 159. Certainly not good, but, you know, that's that. So now let's look at um, Rick Porcello. He's the next guy on my list. I'm just going, I got a list, and I'm just going in order of the list. So let's go back to the majors. The Mets, you got Rick Porcello. And here is Rick Porcello if you draw out his stats from 60 games. Just multiply them out. He would be 3-19 and 19 with a 564 earned run average and 200 hits allowed in 159 innings. And you can see what this card looks like. Now let's go look at the Imagine season. Rick Porcello. And we bring him up. And now you can see 9 and 16, a 490 earned run average, which is better, and only 188 hits in 167 innings. And you can see the card is even really better. So, um, and again, I mean, that's probably because Porcello just happened to have a mostly bad run for 60 games. Stratomatic saying, well, this is Rick Porcello. If he had had 32 starts over an entire season for the Mets, this is more like what he would have looked like. So let's go to another guy. Oh, yes. Let's go to our main man, uh, uh, Voight of the New York Yankees. So here is the season that just draws everything out. And here is Luke Voight. If you just strictly multiply his stats, this is his card. 575 at bats. 59 home runs. He almost hit 60 home runs if you extrapolate it out. And a 277 batting average. You might want to note that. And so you can see he's got all of these dongs right here in a row. And then the 1 to 10 and then the 1 to 17. And, you know, it's kind of almost the same story over here, although it's not quite as good. But still, lots of home runs, 277 average, 338 on base if he was multiplied out. Let's go look at the imagined one. The imagined Luke Voigt. A little bit different. He hit 263 and only had 46 home runs. Here you can see it at least eliminates this home run. This, I think, was a home run on the other card. And this was maybe, uh, yeah, this was an automatic home run, I think. And now it's a one to nine. And so, and, and it's the same, pretty much the same difference here. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> you can see 263 batting average, 339 on base. The on base was still pretty much there, but the batting average is a little lower, and the home runs definitely are. Because who's going to hit 59 home runs? And that's, you know, reasonable to say. All right, so now let's go to the majors where it's extrapolated out. Let's go to Gosman. Kevin Gosman, who had a good year. 
Now, this would be his card when multiplied out, and you can see he's 8-8 eight and eight with a 362 earned run average in 162 innings pitched, and he had a 110 whip, a 1.10 whip. And this is a very good card. I mean, I know because I have it in my Elmwood League, so I, I do have Gosman in my Elmwood League. So here you go. So take a look at that, and now we'll go to the Imagine season San Francisco and Gosman. And here you can see big difference. Uh, nine and eight, the record's not very different, but the ERA goes up and so does the whip to 118. And you can note that the card isn't quite as good. Now, I want to point out some of these guys and, you know, take a look at Gosman, the imagined Gosman. Some of these guys, Stratomatic, just kind of tweak the card a little bit. They said, all right, you know, uh, I, we're, uh, basically they multiplied the stats out, maybe added a thing here or there in the stats and basically made the card the same. But some of them, are, there are some pretty sizable differences. So, um, and, we'll, and we may see that as we go on. Now, I want to go to the majors and I want to go to the White Sox, my White Sox, and I want to look at a couple of the White Sox. The first one is Abreu. So here's Abreu, and again, you can see much like with Voigt, he doesn't quite get almost touching 60, but he has 51 home runs if you multiply it out. 648 at bats, 51 homers, 162 uh, batted in, and a 317 average with a 3770 on base. And so here's the card, and here's what that number of home runs and that number of at-bats looks like. And again, this is just multiplied straight out. But now let's go to the Imagine season for the White Sox and take a look at Abreu. And here you can see they project him to 45 home runs. That's six fewer. A 294 batting average, not three, whatever it was, 317 or whatever it was, and a 350 on base instead of a 370 on base. And I think that given uh, Abreu's history and if he had played a full season, you have to uh, assume he would have dropped off a little bit. He wouldn't have stayed on the power pace for 51 home runs, I don't think. And this is, I'm, and I'm a White Sox fan, I'm saying this. And he probably would not have hit 317 for an entire season, nor would he have had a 370 on base percentage. And I think you'll see that when he plays this year. So um, so this is Stratomatic saying this is a more realistic Abreu card. And I think that's a kind of a significant you know, difference in the card for, for Abreu. Now let's look at Tim Anderson. We'll go back to the majors. We'll go to Tim Anderson. And you can see, if you extrapolate him out, he hits 27 home runs, or no, yes, yes, 27, or no, he hits, uh, yeah, 27 homers, 57 RBIs, has um, a 322 batting average and a 357 on base percentage. And you can see this left versus lefty card is just, it's like solid on base. The guy is getting on base. And then, so here's here's that card. Now, if you go to the Imagine season and you go to Tim Anderson, now you've got a guy that's hitting 302, not 322, and 25 home runs instead of 27. That's not a significant difference. Um, um, although in fewer at bats, far I think far fewer at bats. But anyway, that's not really a significant difference. But the batting average is, and the on base is. You've got an on base now of 338, and you notice over here. Well, no, he still does get on base quite a bit. I mean, it is a really a solid on base card. But Strat, I think, correctly said that uh, Tim Anderson would not hit in the 320s, or you know. You know the mid 320s almost um, over a con uh, over an entire season it would be more like 302 and his on base percentage would not be 350 or whatever it would be more like 338 so that's that and then now let's go look at some lesser known players 
Uh, let's go look at uh, Tampa Bay's Zanino, because now here's where you're, you're starting to get in some significant differences. Now, I know it's significant differences with a bad player as far as hitting, but still, here is Mike Zanino in this set. And you can see he's got, um, he, he, uh, he multiplies out to 203 at bats, 11 homers, 27 RBIs, a 147 batting average and a 238 on base. And this is what the card would look like. Now, if we go to the imagined season and we look at him on Tampa Bay, Now you're talk, talking a little different. 210 at bats, 11 home runs, 28 RBIs, a 171 batting average, which is significantly higher, I think, than 140 something, and a 253 on base percentage. And uh, the card is a little better. So that's, you know, and that's what, that's again, Stratomatic saying, hey, you know, based on, I think what they do is they take the history of the player how they traditionally did in the second half, um, you know, how many slumps they hit, you know, that kind of thing. They probably researched that and came up with the differences that they have. So let's go look at Juan Soto. I know there was a request uh, from the other video to look at Juan Soto. So we'll look at both Juan Sotos in this video. You've got Juan Soto on the um, Washington team where he is multiplied out very good card. Uh, it predicted him to, or it multiplies out as 35 homers, 100 RBIs, a 351 batting average, and a 490 on base. Now, yeah, take note of those. Here against righties, he's got two columns pretty much where he's not out. And then um, over here, he's got three home runs in a row, four, well, five in a row, but three automatic. One is a one, and one is a one to 17. But now let's look at the imagined Juan Soto. And if you look at the imagined Juan Soto, you have quite a difference. Uh, 327 batting average, a 457 on base percentage, uh, 32 home runs. The home runs aren't really that much different, but you can note how the and most of these all, all most all of these become walks like before I think in the other card these used to these were hits you can go back and take a look at that but I think there was more hits on this side in the other card than there are here here they're converted mainly to walks so and the home runs aren't quite as you can see I know that the home runs aren't quite as prevalent here as they were so that's what, you know, and again, that's just Stratomatic saying this is what Juan Soto would have done had he had to go through the grueling 162 game schedule and play whatever number of games that he would have played, you know, and get the 441 at bats that he would have gotten. Um, so let's look at Joey Gallo. We'll go to the majors first, go to Texas. You go, you go look at Gallo and Gallo. And again, and this is a guy who's going to be a little different between the two. 521 at bats, 27 homers, a 181 batting average when um, multiplied out and a 301 on base. So that's what his um, card looks like here. And a right field one negative four arm. I don't know if that'll change, but let's go take a look. Um, you got Texas. Let's go to Texas Gallo. And here you can see he is well. He's still a right field one with a negative four arm, but he now he hits two oh three, not one eighty one, and he has a three twenty five on base percentage instead of just over three hundred. So this is a little better card. And it also uh, projects him out to 37 home runs, which I don't, I don't think, uh, or Strat was saying, if he had played an entire season, he would hit 37 home runs. I don't think the other one, um, the other one uh, said that. So you got a little more power and a little more on base and hitting 
if he had actually played out a 162 game schedule again according to Stratomatic and I think probably is more correct than it isn't so now let's go look at um, rookie pitcher Casey Mize for the Detroit Tigers and uh, let's see here there he is so this is how he straightly multiplies out 0 and 8 with a 699 earned run average and 78 hits in 76 innings not a good card not good stats you got the two automatic home runs right here as a matter of fact versus lefties and uh how many home runs and 19 home runs allowed in 76 innings now let's go look at the imagined one and we go to the imagined one and we go to mize and here you've got a guy who's two and eight with a 596 earned run average 89 hits in 83 innings and only 18 home runs allowed in 83 innings pitched and now you see that home run it's not two automatics or whatever it was on the other one it's a one to six and an automatic so a little better still not really good and i mean that, and that's a point too i didn't see any cards where one got where if he it was multiplied out he was either great or horrendous and then in the imagine said he was completely the opposite which is i mean and that wouldn't happen anyway because it would have you know these stats are based on a, a third of a season so you have to assume that that's now let's look at a guy that is definitely different and that's jose l tuve of the astros if you multiplied l, l tuve out he hits 219 with 14 home runs and only a 286 on base percentage and that's what the card would look like it would be you know correspondingly not very good 219 batting average now we go to the imagine season and we look at l2 bay big difference now he hits 265 with 18 home runs and a 331 on base and i and i think that that's correctly strat um made the correct assessment that if El Tuve had played out an entire season he would have been better than um you know than what his stats were strictly multiplied out so um that's what I got for you as far as the players so I want to I want to end by saying my assessment is and if I were a commissioner a league commissioner I would probably have used the imagined set even though the imagine set is using statistics that didn't really happen if you take the 60 game set and you multiply it by 2.7 or 3 you are still really playing with statistics that didn't really happen that are based on a smaller sample size which probably are not truly representative of the player himself i think the imagine set comes closer to replicating what these players probably would have done over a 162 game season than the 60 game cards do if you multiply them by 2.7 now if you're just playing a 60 game year just like the real major leagues did then yeah knock yourself out go for the 60 game set you know use the 60 game set and the 60 game stats because that's what actually happened but um i am of the mind that says that probably we should have used the imagine set and if i were running a league that's what i would have done but what do you guys think what do you think is probably more realistic um or would you have used the 60 game set multiplied out just because you are at least using a baseline of statistics that actually happened versus in the imagine set you're not using statistics that actually happened i'd be interested to hear what everybody thinks but that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.